It's like literally an alien invasion movie where the characters completely miss the invasion because they were stuck in a bunker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Which is which is really cool. It's and like if Independence Day took place now, but instead of Randy Quaid's characters being a war hero, he's Randy Quaid in real life. Yeah, yeah. he's got a bunker in a bunker. <laughs> okay, <laughs> which which is literally what Spielberg's War of the Worlds is. <laughs> yeah, right. Because it's all about them on the ground. They're yeah. not fighting it. And right. then they, they, they run into that whole bunker with uh, Tim Robbins, who turns yeah. out to be a crazy person, a Randy Quaid type. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we Randy need a Quaid Randy type. Quaid type. <laughs> Not Randy Quaid, though. Yeah, some batshit lunatic. Are you sure? I love that casting. We're looking for a like a Randy Quaid. Well, we have Randy Quaid. No, not Randy Quaid. Like <laughs> no, no, no. a Randy I don't Quaid deal with that. type. We don't yeah. have the insurance for that. We don't want to deal with that bullshit. Can you act like real Randy Quaid? <laughs> That's what we're looking for. But not be Randy Quaid. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> <laughs> Making stuff is hard, especially in the entertainment world when there are millions of dollars on the line. And we are going to talk about these disastrous, never-ending, and sometimes dangerous productions. This is The Shit Show. Hello, everyone. My name is Ian. I am joined by Clint. Hello. And Ray. Hello. And this is It Was a Shit Show. So, two things first before we get into our main topic. As all three of us are immense fans of Arrested Development, oh, today as we record this, we heart. just learned the death, learned of the death of Matriarch herself, Jessica Walter. Yeah. That was sad. That was very sad. I feel a little ashamed in that I, I don't really know most of her older stuff. I, I I was kind of introduced to her mostly through and only through Arrested Development, but goddamn. Yeah, she's same. She's so good in this. She was so she's, good. Yeah, in every scene, she just killed it. Yeah. Just killed it. And her work in Archer as well, um, but she's just amazing in that. Do you want to get ants? That's how you get ants. Yeah, her, um, her comic timing is great. She, apparently, she voice actor for a long time. She was um, the mom in Dinosaurs. What? Oh, really? Yeah. She was Franc- Was it Francine? Yeah, Francine. Um, so I the didn't most know that. attractive dinosaur, <laughs> might I add? <laughs> yeah, eighty years old. I mean, that's 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 a good life. Yeah. No, I mean, really, like the, you look at her career, it's like you've done a lot of things. Yeah, but. Uh, yeah. Lover, Jenny Ray constantly quotes. Um, I do. Um, <laughs> I won't hear it and I won't respond to it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Is that a thinly veiled criticism of me? <laughs> I won't hear it and I won't respond to it. Here's $5. Go see a Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like you hear that all the time now. Yeah. People say st- seeing a Star Wars. Yeah. <laughs> like um, I was just watching some clips. The part with her doing air quotes with the martini in her <laughs> and it's like <laughs> spilling <laughs> it's so good oh my god she's so good she is genius. great secondly uh i'm not ready for an episode about Zack snyder's justice league this obviously would be a great time to put that out there but it's turned into a much bigger thing and um, would you say that it's turned into a shit show. <laughs> I mean, it was obviously already was a, already shit, a show, shit show, but it it just turned into so much more that maybe two episodes. I don't know. Oh, well, uh, I I, uh, I'm, I gotta say I was a little disappointed when I heard we weren't gonna do uh, Justice League because I can finally fit into my Batman shirt, <laughs> which I've just <laughs> too, unveiled. No, no, <laughs> you did too early, too early, Clint. <laughs> Zip it back up. Oh, sorry. Zip okay, it yeah. back up. I will wear this. <laughs> yeah, put it God away. damn it. Put it away. <laughs> No, I, this shirt, I couldn't wear it because- I put your dick back in your pants, <laughs> god damn it. That was always out. That was always out. <laughs> now, I, uh, oh, but Lisa did want me to tell you all that for the recording of the podcast, she, in honor of us recording, because she, she thought we were doing Justice League as well. And in honor of that, she wore her Wonder Woman shirt. She's wearing it right <laughs> now as we Cute. were recording. So Justice League, it's, there's still some interesting details coming out about it. So I kind of wanted to delay it. So next time. Uh, instead- with Godzilla versus Kong coming to 
quote-unquote theaters and HBO Max on March 31st. Let's take a look at another monster movie universe, Cloverfield. It was amazing how many times uh, I would be asked about Cloverfield. You know, when's the sequel coming? Uh, since then, Godzilla has been in the mix and Pacific Rim has been in the mix. To do something like that again, it's got to it has to be a great reason for it. What we decided as we were working on 10 Cloverfield Lane, which when it came to us was called The Cellar, the idea that, that this movie would be a kind of sibling to Cloverfield and not a literal continuum, Cloverfield Universe, or someone said Cloververse, uh, was very exciting to us. It's a way of doing a series of movies that all share a certain kind of connection and yet not feel like we are simply redoing, uh, revamping, retooling, rebooting, but rather doing something original and, and hopefully frightening and entertaining. Okay, so the first Cloverfield in 2008, developed by J.J. Abrams, who wanted to make an original American kaiju. That's where that all came from. He was in Japan. He right. was like, we don't have our own. We should come up with our own. For those of you who aren't nerds, that's what Godzilla is. I, and Mothra and all the rest. Doesn't it just mean, doesn't it just mean giant monster? I don't know. No, I, I'm, oh. I, for someone who has rarely seen any monster movies like that, like Godzilla and what mm-hmm. have you, I love Japanese culture and kaiju. Like I love Super Sentai, and that's what they do. They're just the giant robots fighting the giant monsters. It's Power Rangers in Japan. Like Pacific Rim. Yeah, but yeah. Pacific Rim was meh. We saw the Pacific Rim with my mom, and afterwards she was like, what did I just watch? <laughs> she, she didn't get it. Um, but she never watched Gundam Wing as a kid? Come on. <laughs> no, she, she had no idea what a Gundam was. Or when was. you were a kid? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I remember when Cloverfield came out, I was really excited about it. And I really, I really enjoyed the movie. It's one of the movies that I still own on DVD that I haven't gotten rid of. So let's we'll go into a little bit of details about the original Cloverfield. Um, written by Drew Goddard, who is a writer on Lost and Alias, and mm-hmm. he was so uh, both J.J. Abrams shows, um, who went on to do Cabin in the Woods, developed Daredevil for Netflix, one of my favorite movies ever, The Martian. Mm. Anyway, moving on. Like point break. until the end. Okay, moving on. We're not <laughs> talking. We're not <laughs> talking about Martian. To end in we're not space. talking about Martian. <laughs> okay, so Cloverfield is also directed by Matt Reeves. In his first movie, he um, co-created Felicity with J.J. Abrams and went on to do um, the new Apes movies. I don't know. Have I talked about these before? <laughs> oh, so we can talk about Planet of the Apes, but we can't talk about Martian? Okay. Well, you and just think also, you get to like, run this show? Doing, yeah, I want to talk about Felicity, goddammit. <laughs> yeah. He also is doing the new this Batman. This is a Felicity podcast now. <laughs> Ian's not here. Clint, let's talk about Remember it. Remember her haircut? Oh, my God, her haircut. <laughs> And that was it. That's all we all remember about Felicity. That's literally the only thing I know about Felicity. Okay, so Cloverfield, the entire movie was made in secret. Nobody knew it it existed until that very famous trailer in front of Transformers where it wasn't even given a title. had that part where they're like at the party and they hear a bunch of sounds and then like the Statue of Liberty head comes rolling in. Yeah. And, yeah. and all it just said was a release date, one eighteen oh eight. And so that's what everybody just kind of called the movie for a long time. They used a ton of viral marketing to kind of, what is this movie? Like everybody was like, what is it? What is it? What is it? And it, it just kind of brew that energy into actually people showing up. Yeah. I, th- I felt like it kind of had a world of the world's vibe, like Orson Welles yeah. s- style. Like we're like, oh shit, did this really happen? And we just didn't know about it. Like <laughs> that's what I, that's what I yeah. felt like when I was yeah. watching this is like, this wasn't on the news. Like. Yeah, have I looked at the news lately? What's happening in New York right <laughs> what now? What happened to Lady and Liberty? why is it being shown while I'm trying to watch Transformers? Yeah. yeah, like all the signs were there that this is clearly a movie, but in the back of my mind, like, you know, my heart of hearts, I was like, oh, damn. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, speaking of that, it was kind of like a movie that reached the heights of how far you could, like how far you could go with uh, found footage. Yeah. Um, it was kind of like a, gimmick for a while and it still kind of is um but like there's parts of that movie where like why the fuck are you filming this yeah you're you're trying to walk between two like on a plank between two skyscrapers and it's like why the fuck are you filming yeah yeah. yeah, bro like put it put it it down down, put it down i mean to be fair i feel that way about most of those documentary style tv shows like parks and rec after a while like the documentary shtick is like this is not believable no one would be filming this yeah where's the camera in this scene yeah 
Why are they mic'd? Yeah, um, <laughs> exactly. Why are they mic'd? It, I mean, it's kind of funny, though, thinking about like how big that was, like off of Blair Witch. Yeah. And then like Cloverfield is probably the biggest it ever went, just in terms of scale. Um, okay, so the budget of Cloverfield was $25 million, makes $172 million. So it was a big hit. And I, I remember everybody went to that movie just like, what is it? What, what's gonna, what are we going to see? Yeah. And there is, FYI, there is a Dharma Initiative logo in it. Oh, is there? Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't watch Lost until about five years ago. And so I had <laughs> I, I could have seen it and been like, oh, whatever. There's, yeah. a, there's it's, a whole it's podcast like, it's like about it. it. You can go listen yeah. to it later. Something called Getting Lost. <laughs> some, some bros. Um, this is, you have this, no idea. This is why you can show your skin. That's what I was saying. Oh, yeah, because yeah. I have a Dharma tattoo now. Exactly. Like a freaking poser. Taking, here's the thing is like, clothes off here's again. the thing, like the funny thing is like, I talk about this on Lost, like Lost is by no means my favorite show, like at all. Uh, it's just because I have such a good time doing the show yeah. and like meeting all these people, like, yeah, I'll keep it up. I'll watch the episodes now again. But yeah, Lost. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not really that a fan of the show, but I did get I, a thing tattooed on my body my, yeah, representing yeah, yeah. it. Permanently. <laughs> Um, it's like the the logo shows up for like half a frame. Oh, gotcha! It, just, it does a, like a little blip in the corner. That's fun. Um, and you so, guys will have to do a episode about it. That's actually not why, a bad idea. Why is it in Cloverfield? What no, does well, it mean? What's you the should do what what there's kind of the Abrams verse. Essentially, that all of his properties have like these random connections, and one of the big ones is Slusho. So Slusho is like a fake. Slurpy type. And, oh, okay. And oh, it's, it's like red almost, apple, like red apple cigarettes for Quentin it, Tarantino. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. And so Slusho is in almost everything but Star Wars. I think everything that J.J. Abrams has ever touched, there's Slusho somewhere. Really, mm-hmm. even Star Trek. Um, yeah, there's literally, literally, Ohura comes to the bar and she goes, "I'll take a blah blah blah, blah and a Slusho." She literally says it. That's like they'll, so and funny. then, but in the, but it's in the background of all the other TV shows. There's a bunch of other stuff that kind of ties into like the Abrams verse, but the Cloverfield, like the viral marketing, it's like these websites that are dedicated to Slusho or whatever. The head of Slusho was part of some engineering experiment that people believe is why the Cloverfield monster now exists. Like, I don't know. Yeah. Viral marketing, where people just go ham wild with nonsense yeah. on the internet and people just read it. Yeah. There's threads about it yeah. somewhere. Bunch, meanwhile, a bunch the, of mean, nerds. meanwhile, in the real world, like real issues are happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. That deserve well, your attention. It's like, it's almost like it's, <laughs> the people who are sitting there doing the, the slush show nonsense that was hired to do it is now Q <laughs> from QAnon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just. I got really into this. Started this as bullshit. a slusho conspiracy theorist and uh, a slusho uh, anonymizer, whatever. I don't fucking know what they call themselves. So that's the first Cloverfield movie. So it was a big hit. Everybody loved it. Everybody was kind of like, when is the new sequel coming out? Uh, a lot of people are like, when is it? Sequel, sequel, sequel. And there's a part in the original movie where they are trying to cross the bridge, the Brooklyn Bridge or something like that in New York, and something happens underneath the water, and it it disrupts everybody, and they can't leave. They can't leave the bridge. And if you watch the movie, it doesn't really make sense to it being the monster that's doing it. And Matt Reeves did a whole interview. He's like, to me, I would assume like that was Cloverfield 2, but nothing ever comes of it. So... Uh, in 2012, Paramount buys this script called The Cellar, uh, written by Josh Campbell and Matt Stuckin, uh, written to be a super low-budget movie. And in 2014, J.J. Abrams' Bad Robot takes on the production. So, of course, this makes it like a super-secret project because that was... J.J. Abrams has kind of ditched this whole thing about being secretive. But before when he was doing like Lost and all those things, like he was so like, I'm all about like the mystery of what we're doing, you know, and he released this movie that nobody knew that they were even making. And and Lost is just full of just nonsense on the walls that just was like, what does it all mean? And so J.J. Abrams was just like all that. Did he realize that 
how pretentious it sounded. And so I was like, ah, I'm not going to do that anymore. Yeah, no, okay. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of go into that. <laughs> That's my theory. <laughs> so talk about theories. So, um, so he buys it. His company buys it. It's the script is now called Valencia. Um, it's called what? Like the oranges? Valencia? Yeah. Valencia. Okay. Yes. Um, so they hire Damien. Like why though? I, it's one of those things. Like why is Star Wars? Is it just Wars, like code name? Why, yeah, like why Blue, Blue Harvest? Blue Harvest. Yeah. yeah. Uh, stuff like that. Um, I want to be stupid. that guy. I want to be that guy who names like a production. Like, <laughs> you know, so the public doesn't really know what we're filming. Like, you know, they film like a new Star Wars movie. Like, what's this called? It's, like, it's called Denim Wall. <laughs> yeah. Um, ba- so you want to be Mc- a, you want to be a guy who just comes up with random words and puts yeah. them yeah. together. Yeah. Okay. So they sign uh, Damien Chazelle, who went on to do La La Land. Mm-hmm. Um, he comes aboard to direct, and he does some rewrites himself, and then leaves because. Um, he was been trying. He was his passion project was trying to get Whiplash made, mm. the, the drummer movie, and yeah. suddenly he had funding, and he was like, "Sorry, I'm out. I got. I want to go make this." Yeah. So he leaves. They hire Dan Trachtenberg um, to direct. This is his first movie. The only thing, his big thing that kind of put him on the people's radar was the short film Portal: No Escape. So it was like a the short film about it was Portal. like a fan film. That, yeah. yeah, yeah, about that Portal. Shit it was really was good, rad. especially for a fan film. But maybe like nerds who to, played the game would be like, no, oh. it, widely people really liked it. I'm not really into it, but I didn't think it kind of it didn't make sense in the world of Portal. Moving on again, nerds who played yeah. Portal. <laughs> okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In so, the world of Portal, it didn't make sense <laughs> in the world yeah. of Portal. <laughs> <laughs> There's no guards in the middle of there, and, and she's fighting guards, and there's no guards. In... Yep. Anyway. You know we're really getting like off like on our 20th season of this yeah. when we're doing a shit show about a fan-made portal film. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, like in the... <laughs> Welcome to season 20, everybody. <laughs> yeah. um, so another rewrite happens under him, and then around then, uh, John Goodman and Mary, Mary Elizabeth Weinstead are cast. This is a quote from J.J. Abrams. This is while they were in the middle of kind of making it. And this is one of those fun quotes that January will just love. Yeah. Okay. And Clint will be our J.J. Abrams. The script came in. It was a very powerful Twilight Zone idea. We were in a very interesting place because the story was wholly original, a very different situation, different characters from anything we've done. But the spirit of it, the genre of it, the heart of it, the fear factor, the comedy factor, the weirdness factor. There were so many elements that felt like the DNA of the story were the same place that the Cloverfield was born out of. We very intentionally didn't call this movie Cloverfield 2, but we realized that there was enough of a connection, and that movie was good enough that it warranted this association in a way that we think is justified and exciting. Bullshit. I call bullshit. <laughs> so so much bullshit on that, JJ. You know what this, you that know was what this a fucking, is? That was a fucking indie horror movie that you just like slapped a Cloverfield monster on, you piece of shit. Well, it's like, as he says, it's like the spirit of the genre of the, the heart of the fear factor. It's like, so... So the cre- just being in a creative space. So like, yeah. yeah, it's like it's not the it's, spirit of it. So like being scared. There's a lot of fucking movies where people are scared and they don't have cloverfield monsters in them. You twat. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid. Well, it's like what we were talking about with um, Split. And how they just slapped Bruce Willis on at the end mm-hmm. of it. And it was like, these movies are connected. Don't even it's, fucking get me started on M. Night Shyamalan. <laughs> this is the exact same thing. But yeah. I kind of liked this better. I don't know why. Maybe no, it's just because this, I thought this was a good movie. This is a this is an excellent movie until the very end where they slap the Cloverfield monster on it. Like it's That's what's well, so obnoxious. Is Cloverfield it's, monster's not in it. Well, whatever the fuck, like the sci-fi it's, nonsense at the bullshit at the end, the, the, that the, stuff. The space aliens. Yeah. yeah, like whatever. Like, but there, but then like, okay, if that's not the Cloverfield monster, then why is this movie called Cloverfield Lane? What, <laughs> Ian? Tell me, talk to me about that. We'll get into that. I I think where they where they fell short of this was what he's talking about, where it's like there's. We we didn't call it Cloverfield too because we didn't want. He's 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 trying to do that secretive thing. He's trying to be clever. Yeah. If he wanted to be, if he wanted to be more successful, because later we're going to talk about the Cloverfield paradox, and I, uh, I think what it would have been better <laughs> is if he just came out with this, you know, this this idea and said, 
we're going to do a Cloverfield universe, an expanded universe, you know, kind of like- the words right out of my mouth. Yeah, I was like, well, we're going to like, because if you do that, then people will expect like, oh, 11 Cloverfield Lane, like this is in the same universe and they can expect that. They could walk into it knowing that and be excited when they actually see the bullshit monsters. Yeah. And then they could do another story where it's like taken from another perspective. Maybe they could even do another found footage type thing where it's, you know, like someone else that, that maybe is in Queens or whatever, some other part of. Like someone that's, that, uh, it's, I'm writing this right now. It's some <laughs> dude who is in the park in, in, in Central Park running. And it's just him and this, this, that's all it is. It's him in Central Park trying to get out because these, these monster dogs are going to come and eat his face. Like, yeah, there you go. We'll, but call, it, we'll call it Cloverfield Bench. There's, Cloverfield, a lot of, there's a lot of benches in Central Cloverfield Park. Cloverfield Park. Yeah. Um, yeah. But instead of doing that, they basically were just like, oh, we're just going to buy all these like indie scripts that, that are good stories that will make good movies, but slap the Cloverfield logo and brand on them to get people to come see them. And I think it's a little bit uh, doing Twilight Zone a little bit of disservice by comparing this to a very, you know, Twilight Zone-esque. It's like, okay, you just got a, you just bought a script. Yeah. What just Jenny Ray was saying is like, and then we're just going to slap this on there. Like that's not Twilight Zone. Yeah. I mean, so. Yeah. Well, okay, so we're going to dive further into this as, as it goes. Um, I love the Twilight But speaking Zone, of what you were saying, like the, the found footage, um, there was this, <laughs> other, this, this other funny quote from Abrams um, where he kind of throws the original Cloverfield, kind of throws some shade at his own movie. It's got all of the things that Cloverfield had without making you throw up because it's not a found footage movie. <laughs> I think that's kind of funny that he's kind of just kind of like making fun of his own movie. Yeah. So J.J. J. J. Abrams, he, he, as a person who, as a creative person, he really confuses me. What does he do? Like, I know like what he's done, like he's directed Star Wars, he's directed, you know, all these other things. But like when it comes to Lost, he just basically was like, give me a million dollars. Here's a pilot. And then he pieces out and has nothing else to do with it. Yeah, yeah he's an he's an executive producer, and that's exactly what they do. They yeah, we get talked the, about that. They get the thing oh, yeah, on okay. rails. They get it. They get it produced. Right. They they get the money. They set it all up. They do the pilot. They sell it. But their name is attached to it as an executive producer, so they continue to make money on it and make money off of the um, syndication. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, so, we so about Cloverfield was it just like, hey, here's this? It wasn't his idea. No, right? No? No. It wasn't his idea. He's no. like, I like this enough. I'm going to put my name on it. Yeah. And he's making money from it. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, it's Bad Robot is his company. So it's whatever. He decides what they're going to make, what they're going to spend money on, right? Well, uh, fuck, what, it's it's kind of funny that when you <laughs> say literally like two episodes ago on Simpsons, J.J. Abrams was the guest. He makes a joke. He's like, it's just stealing childhood and repackaging it something else. And J.J. Abrams is like, that's what I do. <laughs> yeah. He's stealing the nostalgia of our childhood and repackaging it and making it worse. Yeah. Because well, didn't he do Super 8 as well? <laughs> yeah, he did Super 8. Ugh. But he also, I mean, he also did Star Trek and Star Wars. And Star and Wars, yeah. Two Star Wars movies. Yeah. Ugh. Okay. By the way, though, you don't want to be a producer. You want to be an executive producer. <laughs> executive because being a producer. producer is a lot of fucking work. But being an executive producer, that's where you just get to slap your name on shit and make money. It's great. Now, but how much in the creative process know. is he involved, though? Yeah, it depends on what depends on what it is where where you're at. You okay, know? so like and how there... powerful of a person you actually and are, how big the and movie generally is. executive producer is like, I just raised money for this. Christopher Nolan is all over Justice League. He didn't touch that. He just got some funding together. He put his name on it, and people are like, "Oh, Christopher Nolan's attached. Oh, I'll give you money to make keep making this movie." Ah, uh, okay. So, so there were some reshoots. Most thought that when it went went to reshoots. That the movie, 10 Cloverfield Lane, the movie is this tight, contained thriller inside of a, a bomb shelter, right? right? And then suddenly the last, like, five minutes of it is her fighting an alien dog and then an alien ship. And and everybody was like, that's where J.J. Abrams was like, it's, it's Cloverfield, just put that on there. That actually is not the reshoots. That was Damien Chazelle. That was his idea. Oh, that was his contribution. But it yes. wasn't in the original script, though. No. No, okay. it was not in the original. He added that. The reshoots were actually just, they were adding more fun scenes, like, to make mm. it not so dour. Mm. So it's funny because that is the biggest criticism that movie has is that last 10 minutes. Yeah. People are like, it's so good until that last 10 minutes. Which are bullshit. It's just kind of like, okay, sure, why not, whatever, right? 
So the actors knew that the movie was being considered as a Cloverfield sequel while they were filming, but they didn't know officially until a few days before the trailer was released. And they decided on the title, 10 Cloverfield Lane. So the good of this is it gives the movie a bigger presence in the general public. Suddenly people are very more interested in it than it was just the seller with John Goodman, right? Yeah. Okay, that you know, yeah, sounds kind of interesting, it. right? It, um, so it would be mo- more likely seen than a one-off film. The bad, the obvious. Like it's... It's not an original film anymore. It's yeah. now a sequel. It's now part of a franchise. It's it's tying itself to Hollywood stuff, you know. Yeah. Um, I, it's I, ruining the current film that already exists. Yeah. I mean, I honestly don't consider that part of any. Like, there's, it has nothing to do with it. Like, it is a standalone movie as far as I'm concerned. And the stupid well, they thing about- they kind of marketed it that way too, didn't they? Yeah. Like, so the thing you were saying is like, oh, the good thing about putting the Cloverfield label on it is that it gave it more visibility and- more brand recognition and more people would go see it than if it was just this indie thriller. Exactly. But and, and the so trailer... many people were very excited about like wanting a sequel to Cloverfield and suddenly it existed, right? <sighs> that like that just feels so cheap though, because honestly, the trailer for that movie had nothing to do like it didn't show the aliens. Like people who probably saw that trailer were just like, wait, how is this a Cloverfield movie? But yeah. the trailer was good. Like I saw that trailer and was like, holy shit, I want to see this movie because I love those kinds of movies. And it like, it, anyway, I just, it just cheapens it. It's so it was, Yeah, it was kind of a gamble on the studio's part to do that because then it's going to bring people to the theaters and be like, well, they didn't show us anything about the monsters in the trailer, but yeah. it got me here in the theater. Exactly. And then you don't see it until like, yeah, the last 10 minutes. I think a lot of people did feel cheated. Like, yeah, oh, I sat through that stupid. really good movie for this kind of waiting for that monster yeah yeah kaiju okay (laughs) so 10 cloverfield lane comes out eight years later so 2016 um budget around 15 million grosses 110 million worldwide so it's a pretty good hit um for how cheap it was uh 90 percent on rotten tomatoes which i think is accurate that movie is very good um, I agree. I, I liked it. I liked it a lot. Um, the movie really has no ties to the original Cloverfield Correct. outside of viral marketing. Well, and don't you see, like, at the end, so she's finding the monster, the the, the dogs, the like right. the, the, the Cloverfield the terror dogs, right? No, it's not even the same terror dog. It's not. Okay, no. but it's just... It's, it's still... just a, just like an alien dog. Okay. But don't you see, like, off in the distance, like, at the end? So, don't so, you see... so she, she fights the dog and then um, the creature... And then she gets sucked up by a spaceship, destroys it with a Molotov cocktail because they're like, it's like part mechanical, part um, organic. Organic. Mm-hmm. So it's kind of like a cyborg kind of thing. And so she beats that. She gets in the car and then they're like, we need help in whatever town. And I think it's like Texas or something like that. So it's nowhere near New York. Okay. And then she's like, I'm going to go help fight. And then she turns and then there's a, like a lightning strike and you see like a giant alien ship. Okay. So it's not the Cloverfield monster. It has nothing to do with it. It's it's really just alien. It's a, it's this weird alien uh, invasion movie where it it's the people on the ground that have nothing to do with gotcha. the big battle, right? right? So it's like literally an alien invasion movie where the characters completely missed the invasion because they were stuck in a bunker. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Which is which is really cool. It's and like if Independence Day took place now, but instead of Randy Quaid's characters being a war hero, he's Randy Quaid in real life. Yeah, yeah. he's got a bunker <laughs> in a bunker. Okay, which <laughs> which is literally what um, uh, Spielberg's War of the Worlds is. <laughs> yeah, right. Because it's all about them on the ground. They're yeah. not fighting it, and right. then they 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 run into that whole bunker with uh, Tim Robbins, who turns yeah. out to be a crazy person. A Randy Quaid type. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> we Randy need a Quaid Randy type. Quaid type. <laughs> Not Randy Quaid, though. Yeah, some batshit lunatic. <laughs> I love that casting. We're looking for, a, like, a Randy Quaid. Well, we have Randy Quaid. No, not Randy Quaid. <laughs> no, like, no, no, a Randy no. Quaid with that. type. We don't yeah. have the insurance for that. I don't want to deal with that bullshit. Can you act like real Randy Quaid? <laughs> That's what we're looking for. But not be Randy Quaid. Yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> Uh, so it's so Ten Cloverfield Lane is an alien invasion movie, not a rampaging monster movie, not a kaiju movie. Yeah. So with the release of this, this is establishes the Clover Cloverfield universe, 
and it's um do people Abrams. call it the clover verse yes they can do. i slap those people yes. in the face <laughs> yes it's hey, as now... long as they don't come out with the Cloverfield Chronicles, because fuck that shit. <laughs> Fucking nerds. They will. You know they will. Don't, don't bring that into this the universe. Fourth movie is don't be bring that into this world. So this is now J.J. Abrams' Twilight Zone. The idea is just loosely connected stories of horror. And what you said earlier is exactly accurate. I think that if they straight up just said that up front, that they were going to make this kind of just random anthology of fun horror movies and put the Cloverfield title on it, that they don't have anything to do with anything with each other. Like people would have accepted it a lot more. Yeah, we did. It's called black mirror. It's great. Yeah. Well, exactly. So you would have, we would have all the people that went to Cloverfield 10 Cloverfield lane were like, yeah, this is a great movie, but where's the monster? Where yeah. are the other characters from that other movie? Right. Like, how does it tie into it? And it never did, right? And so everybody's like, what's going on? And it was because Abrams was being so um, cagey and and secretive about it. If they were just straight up just like, we're just going to do a bunch of really fun horror movies or just fun, scary stuff that we're just calling the Cloverfield universe. I think people would way more accept it. Yeah. Yeah. Because, yeah, because as we're going to talk about with Cloverfield Paradox, they went too far in the one direction. Like, well, let's really try to connect these. Exactly. And the movie, I, I actually watched it. I, I wanted to okay. do my due diligence. But, okay, yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll save it. I'll save it. I, okay. spoiler alert, did not watch it. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. everyone. So, God Particle, a movie written by Oren Uzel and directed by Julius Ona. Bad Robot purchases the script called God God Particle, a sci-fi horror about a space station above Earth studying renewable energy that rips a hole into parallel universes. Okay, so J.J. Abrams is to produce, gets a great cast, including David Oyelowo, who was um, uh, Martin Luther King in Selma, Zhang Ziyi from Crouching Tiger, and I had, the, January. I had the biggest crush on her in 1999. She is yeah. gorgeous. Oh my goodness! When she, was, I, I watched Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon so many times just so I could watch her fight, and I was like, Whoa. "She is beautiful." Yeah. <laughs> and then speaking of very attractive, lovable people, me and Jenny Ray's boyfriend, Chris O'Dowd. Chris O'Dowd. Oh yeah. <gasps> that Everyone's dude. America's boyfriend and Ireland's boyfriend. I yeah, guess too. That, that dude <laughs> like, is and super small cool. person racist. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so J.J. Um, Abrams was set to produce it. They only had a budget of of ten million, so it's going to be a pretty low budget. It's a space station movie, and it was going to be cost less than ten Cloverfield Lane. Anyway, yeah, that's um. Ooh. Well, I mean, if you if, if it's all just tight corridors, that's a pretty easy set to build, right? I don't. Know. Yeah, sure. So, filming starts in June two thousand sixteen, goes till September. In the middle of making the movie, God Particle, Abrams reveals to the director that he's been wondering how to adjust the film into a Cloverfield sequel. In the middle of shooting the movie? Yes. And the director, did he do like, Okay. did he get like so much whiplash from so, like, the fuck? A lot, of this, a lot of this information came out during, um, they were like on Facebook, doing mm-hmm. like a Facebook Live Q&A. In, in general, you, you kind of got the sense that this was all unplanned. Lots of like nervous laughter, like. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll drink to that. Yeah. yeah. Cloverfield's a huge <laughs> hey. success. So for this guy, he's like, he's like, I'm making this, I'm my first big Hollywood movie. And it's like, oh, we're going to turn it into this complete other thing. And it's like, oh my God. You so, know, what? that, that being said, I probably would have liked this movie a lot better if they didn't do that didn't if they didn't if jj abrams didn't come out and say oh hey uh, yeah. we're gonna try and make this into because yeah because then because that's where it starts to get like fucking weird this yeah. movie okay so the whole film takes place on the space station um during the original shoot of god particle uh takes place on the space station but after some test audiences complained that they wanted to see the chaos that they were hearing that, that they talk about on the space station, that's something that stuff is happening on Earth. The, the audience, test audiences are like, we want to see it. We want to see it. So 
um, what was happening on Earth. And Abrams decides this is the perfect time to reshoot some stuff and throw in some Cloverfield nonsense. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> throw in some Cloverfield monsters. <laughs> yeah. So again, good versus bad. A generic um, horror, sk- thriller, space movie that suddenly has Cloverfield attached to it. It worked. In theory, it worked in the last time, the last time, right? And mm-hmm. now they're like, oh, people will want to see this because it's the third Cloverfield movie. <laughs> <laughs> This this movie did not know what it was. <laughs> exactly. Oh, d- did it seem like um, it was a totally different movie and then like some random guy was like, I'm going to try to fit it into this other series of movies in the middle? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you, that now that, now that like? you say that, I, having watched the movie, having been the only one on this podcast who watched the movie. <laughs> <laughs> we just if, do this. We just do this if to you, punish you. <laughs> if you had taken out all the shit that's happening on Earth and if you had taken out... Uh, the fact that they started calling this whole thing the Cloverfield Paradox in the actual film, like this movie would have been fine. I don't know about that. Okay, so I've watched, I didn't watch it. I watched a ton of other videos talking about Cloverfield connections and and uh, people kind of making fun of the uh, the video I sent to you guys uh, in January Watch. What's the name of the guy? Cosmonaut? Cosmonaut Variety Hour. And Thank you. Thank you, by the way, to Cosmonaut <laughs> Variety Hour for not making me watch this fucking movie. Because, because he, he plainly details the plot and goes over all the different things, of why it just makes no goddamn sense. And so even if you remove some of that stuff, it's just like, like he gets his arm cut off and like, why is it walking around? Yeah, like, okay, they, they that put, was they weird. Made, they 3D printed a gun and they put it in a safe. And then this girl who had no idea that they put the gun in the safe Gets the gun out of the safe. That's like just, true. Just yeah. stupid, stupid stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, like where it's just lazy, kind of like. Um, and then she has the gun. Sure, why not? And I didn't think about that. Maybe that's just because I was watching it really late at night. But now that you mention it, now that I think <laughs> about it, that is a hundred percent correct. Um, and like, yeah, and what I was saying, like, this movie just doesn't know what it is. Yeah, hundred like, percent. Is it a sci-fi horror film? Is it you know uh, a science fiction? Is it a I mean, slasher? Is it yeah, slasher. Like, yeah. Is it supposed to be a gory movie? Yeah. Psychological thriller. Like it's just throwing out all these different genres at you. Yeah. yeah. And let me tell you right now, as someone who 3D prints, I wish I had that 3D printer. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Somebody might print of Kamala uh, is pure garbage, but these guys are printing up fucking guns. A working <laughs> space gun. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. So. And it was so compact too. Yeah. So in December 2016, Paramount announces that the movie's release date is being pushed from February 2017, that's when it was original release date, and is being pushed to October 2017. Now, this is they say at the time this is allow more time for post-production, aka visual effects, and obviously reshoots. And now it's just being they're just calling it not God Particle, they're calling it 2017. Cloverfield movie because they just didn't have a title for it. So the additions that they filmed include changing the fear of the God particle. Like they're, they're working on something called the God particle to Mm -hmm. just for energy reasons. The Cloverfield particle. No, the fear of the Cloverfield paradox. The station being renamed. um, (laughs) The station being renamed Cloverfield. And having one character on Earth who is married to one of the characters on the station. Right. So all of that is new. Um, and that character who's on Earth finds that there's this, some major disaster happening, which turns out to be the Cloverfield monster from the original movie. By the way, this doesn't make a lot of sense because it's like two different cities. Isn't he, aren't, aren't they in like London? They're in London. Yeah. yeah. And the Cloverfield monster is in New York. So it's like, wait, what? And then um, the Are time Are they implying periods... the existence of multiple Cloverfield monsters? <laughs> yeah, but it's also like the, the time um, for the movie, the original movie is 2008. And like that's what that's what like time stamped on it, like during the video. Yeah. And this is like 2016 or something like that. So the time period doesn't even matter. Wait, out. so like they literally say in the movie, it's 2016. Yeah, or something, whatever it is. Whatever, the time period doesn't even match up. It's so almost like they like didn't con- even try. Con- there's just been yeah. like continuous Cloverfield monsters for eight years. <laughs> yeah, well, no, I was, I was watching this with Lisa. And again, just like any other movie I watched for this show with Lisa, she's really just in the room with me. 
Uh, and she's she's reading up like on and she's like watching parts of it here and there. She's like, wait a minute, is this supposed to be at the same time? And I'm like, I think so. She's like, but that was in 2000 whatever. I'm like, oh, yeah. she even pulled that out. Yeah, yeah. And she's not even watching <laughs> it. Barely wa- half watching it. <laughs> she's like, wait, I thought this was I'm supposed just... to be like a future thing. Yeah. Like they're like in a future space station. Where and I'm like, yeah. She's like, but doesn't this create the mon? Doesn't this bring the monster from another dimension and put it on Earth? And that's where the monster. Like, I'm like, yeah. Look, Lisa, it's all it's parallel universes. Um, yeah. you know, time is How circular. How dare you disparage it doesn't JJ matter. Abrams? Yeah, people aren't gonna pay that close attention. It's just, nah, nah, nah. Yeah, little did JJ Abrams realize that there was gonna be a podcast called "It's a Shit Show." <laughs> well, we're gonna we talk, about talk about this about in about depth. It. JJ Abrams, give us money. I love Lost. <laughs> by the by the way, we're talking about Lost. This Sorry. isn't the right podcast. Sorry, my bad. Um, but I, that was me when we, when he was watching the Snyder Cut, by the way, I would just like, I would just like pop in the room and like watch it for 10 minutes and then like go do something else and like come back in for 10 more minutes and be like, what is happening? And then he would go, <sighs> and like yeah. pause it and be like, well then this happened, this happened, and like would try to explain it to me. And I'd be like, oh, okay. And then I care. would just walk out. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yeah. Like actually, I know I asked what was happening. But please stop telling me because I <laughs> yeah, do not give a shut shit. Shut up. Shut up, nerd. <laughs> <laughs> and then I and then she beat me up and yeah. then turned me upside down. To- and yeah, took, I took, I took his glasses and I snapped him over my knee and gave him a wedgie. Yeah, Ian's still swirly. picking that wedgie out of his butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Fucking nerd. <laughs> what do you want for dinner? For a reason. <laughs> Lisa's really funny though too because like I'll talk to her about all these different things and she's she's so sweet and I love her so much. But I could just tell in the back of her mind she's like, why are you telling me this? <laughs> I don't care. She's just yep. like patting you on the yep. back, like yeah. okay. Imagine trying to um, edit a 20, 20 minute long video about the MCU and then having your wife go, "Sure, sure, yeah, <laughs> sir." This is now a marriage therapy podcast, Clint. You're here to mediate. Okay. I watched the shit out of that video. I gave many compliments. I fucking sound mixed it. Mm-hmm. How dare you question my support? Ian, I think it's important that you hear Jenny Ray. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, off the rails. Okay. <laughs> Cloverfield. All right. Bring it so, back. Bring us back. Okay. So they do all these reshoots. The movie kind of goes dark. In July of 2017, Paramount delays the movie again, pushing it to February 2018. Then yet again, delays it to April 20th. 2018. No reason is given for the delays, which is generally a sign of a film in trouble. There are shenanigans happening. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Yeah. There was, um, at the same time, there's also this film Life with Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds that opened in March 2017. I hated that that movie too. That was a space, a movie that took place on a space station dealing with an unknown identity, which didn't do well. Yeah, uh, it was kind of garbage. <laughs> um, so they're looking at that going, well, nobody liked that. Mm, we have something that's worse. <laughs> right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. If people don't like Ryan Reynolds. What are we going to do? Ooh. All we have is an animated arm that's just crawling on the floor. We've got the poor man's Ryan Reynolds, Chris O'Dowd. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Chris, we've got Jake Chris. Gyllenhaal, and all we've got is a 3D printed gun. Yeah, <laughs> Chris, don't don't it's listen. 3D we love printed you. Man, all over that yeah. movie. <laughs> can I can I make a guess about what's about to happen? Okay. <laughs> then, on February fourth, two thousand eighteen, during the Super Bowl, the very first trailer for the movie plays. Nobody had seen any footage of this movie. Yeah. Interesting. Which is surprising because putting an ad on the Super Bowl is very expensive. And movie studios tend to just push their like top tier blockbusters on the Super Bowl. Um, yeah, that Because it costs so much. Right. And so not only was there an ad, but what do you think happened? It January. got pushed to Netflix. Yes. Oh, yeah. So after all of that, uh, everything they went through, the movie would be on Netflix tying back to Mowgli. Yeah. Does that what and, they were advertising for the Super Bowl is like only on Netflix? And the movie would be on Netflix as soon as the game ended. 
Whoa. Damn, oh. Netflix. That's a yeah. baller move. <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> Stop watching like... your foosballs and go watch our terrible movie. <laughs> <laughs> we'll pay $90 million for it. <laughs> we don't... We're going to give it for for 50. Netflix, listen, we talked about this. You always just go a dollar over. You don't need to go 40 million. And we'll pay for a Super Bowl ad. <laughs> That's another 20 million. <laughs> so, okay, let's let's back up. So, after the reshoots, <laughs> Paramount became worried that the film was unsalvageable. They were just going, "What the hell is this? This is as you said, it just it doesn't connect. It it seems like so many different movies. It doesn't know what it wants to be. And, I mean, it was bad. And the price had ballooned from the $10 million, original $10 million, to guesses? Um, $50 million. $75 million. Jesus. <laughs> 45 Oh, okay. Oh, well, all right. okay. Hey, you made it sound like it was a really fucking big deal. <laughs> still. Still Listen. four times as much. <laughs> yeah, like. As a millionaire, okay. <laughs> As a millionaire myself, that's not really that much money. Okay. Look, even if I had a million dollars and they said, oh, yeah, by the way, this movie is now $40 million, I was like, fucking shit. <laughs> yeah, like, what, what? That's 40 times more millions than I have. Yeah. <laughs> Chris O'Dowd's arm must be really expensive. I can afford Chris O'Dowd. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Chris. Okay. So that's reportedly how much the movie had uh, gone up to. Um, so they just, they didn't know what the fuck to do with this movie. So they just kept kicking it down the line. And so during the holiday season of 2017, talks began with Netflix. And somewhere in January, the deal was made. Oh, wait. January of 2018? 2018. The Super Bowl's in February? Yes. <laughs> That's as Netflix. much as I know about football as when the Super Bowl is. Netflix paid an unconfirmed amount, but reports said it was over fifty million. Ninety million. Fifty million and <laughs> one. Ninety million. That's just ninety million. That's just, 90 their, million. That's just their base number. This is our five million documentary. Ninety million. Yeah. They have a. They just have an accounting department that doesn't like doing a lot of math, so they just <laughs> flat rate across the board. Ninety million. <laughs> You're like, why 90 million? It's like, well, it worked for that Blight movie. <laughs> it worked for Mowgli. <laughs> so, um, again, the, the amount isn't totally confirmed. Netflix is all really cagey about it. But obviously, it was profitable for Paramount. And and the reports were that it was pushing up to $45 million, so it makes sense there would be more of that. So, not only did Netflix buy the film, they also – so, for like $50 million, Let's say at the lowest number. They also ran that Super Bowl ad, which in 2018, for 30 seconds of ad time, was $5 million. So they put another $5 million mm. just to say that they had this fucking movie. It's a st- okay. The cast and crew only found out about the title and the release <laughs> the morning of. Oh, my God. Of the Super Bowl. As they're watching the Super Bowl, they're all just like having their Super Bowl parties. They're just like, oh, the fuck? Yeah. Oh, hey, that movie I was in. Yeah. Chris was O'Dowd in. over an island, like, oh, the fuck? <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was like, was don't even have the Super Bowl Irish over there. Accent. I know, exactly, yeah. <laughs> um, and during that um, Facebook uh, event where him, uh, the director, Julius Ona, and J.J. Um, Abrams were kind of having this weird, awkward chat. He said, there was a lot of lying and a lot of ke- keeping secrets from even our own friends and family. <laughs> wow. <laughs> that- <laughs> My wife thought I was cheating on her for a t- two-year period. And no, I was just making this terrible movie and couldn't talk about it. How deflating must that be, though, for J.J. Abrams to be like, I'm going to do this thing where it's all secretive it worked for cloverfield and i'm gonna keep doing it keep doing it and then all of a sudden it comes out and it's just like everyone and everyone and their mom is just like this is shit <laughs> he like, doesn't care you know, you know how rich that guy is he doesn't give a fuck he's just yeah, like clearly still gave him the job he'd for, moved along two I, years he'd moved he'd like moved on two years earlier and slapped his name on like 20 other things that's true <laughs> zero I fucks I, it, it, I, I like jj J. abrams from what I, I mean, for the most part, but at the same time, I'm like, God damn, have some integrity, dude. <laughs> it, it, it it's, there's kind of some hubris in there that is yeah. just got out of control. 
So after the movie, after the Super Bowl, everybody goes, oh, well, <laughs> Cloverfield Paradox, the third Cloverfield movie, and it's on Netflix. I can watch it right now. And everybody goes, oh, God, this is terrible. Um, <laughs> uh, receives 20% on Rotten Tomatoes. So terrible. And we'll never know how much it made because Netflix is a black box. Yeah, and I mean, how many people – but that that marketing tactic probably paid off. Oh, the Super Bowl marketing yeah, tactic. Oh, like, no, that was like that's fucking brilliant. Yeah, that is that was a stroke of genius. That's a that's a that's a decent, honestly, like five million dollars for that. I, I can if see, it had been a good movie, <laughs> yeah, that would have been a totally different thing, right? Totally different. Yeah, it would have been a whole like movie like that's a stroke of genius I marketing get, right there. <laughs> you just see I this, wish like this marketing guy sitting like on the throne, and then <laughs> and just listen. <laughs> We release it on the same day as the Super Bowl. <laughs> <laughs> You're saying, people are already in their homes. They're already <laughs> seated down and with friends and family. They can just stay a little bit longer. In front there's of- plenty more beer and chicken wings for you to consume say. while there's paradoxes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> They're already in front of the TV and there's many snacks. <laughs> do you know how many subscribers we have? <laughs> Enough to watch the Super Bowl. I mean, do you think about it? Like, they, they pulled that off in a month. I wish that HBO Max would have done that for Mortal Kombat because I am so <laughs> fucking excited for that movie. He stabs him with his own <laughs> blood. Okay, right. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> Cloverfield Paradox. Um, this movie has direct and indirect connections to the other movies. Um, the monster, obviously. So at the end, they're like, oh, we'll come down. And then the monster shows up out of almost like <laughs> they just didn't know how to end the fucking movie. And it's like, it just pops up at the end. It, he goes, huh? So and then it ends. <laughs> I don't know if they explain, because I, I didn't actually watch the, the YouTube video that you sent me. Uh-huh. I just decided just to watch the movie. Uh, which I, which is now in <laughs> hindsight choice. a bad mistake. Bad choice. Um, but I gave you an out. <laughs> I know you did. I know. I know. He's like, you don't have to watch it. Just watch this YouTube video. I was like, no, no, no. Unlike Abrams, I like I've got suffering. integrity. No. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he doesn't listen to this. It's just like, well, fuck You're you. Good. And I'm like, oh, but I really like your stuff. Come on the podcast. Um, so at the end of the paradox, at the end of the Cloverfield paradox, they seemingly fix things because like the whole idea is like they did the God particle and it fucked shit up and in order for them to fix it, they had to do it again, which they did and it seemingly fixed things. Does that mean that at the end of Cloverfield that that monster was just going to disappear because they apparently fixed things? Yeah. I don't know. I did. It, it doesn't make any sense. Um, I mean, it was eight years later at that point, so Earth was just fucked. Like, <laughs> I guess, well, yeah. Because, because it did, nothing turned bad <laughs> until until they turned it on. And in theory, like, the idea is that they were trying to explain, oh, this is why all the weird shit is happening on Earth yeah. is because this thing turned on. Mm. And all these parallel universes suddenly were, like, thrown into chaos. As, well, that's the general idea. As yeah. they do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course. Okay, so some of the random connections. This is, like, really pushing it. Um, The writer on television during Cloverfield Paradox who was worrying about activating this whole thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Has the same last name as John Goodman's character from 10 Cloverfield Lane. Oh, yeah. Isn't that Donald Logues? Yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, like, that's how far we're reaching. (laughs) And then... (laughs) <laughs> so, but he's also being interviewed by a woman, Lori Bream from Silicon Valley. Right. Excellent actress. Um, she is also the same actress who was trying to get into the bunker in ten, 10 Cloverfield Lane that was like melting. Like she had like, she was like banging on the window and, and oh, yeah. she was kind of like, oh, let me, let me. That's the window. same actress. Oh, right, right, the right. exact same actress that was interviewing the person on Cloverfield. Like oh, okay. this is, these are the, like the very thin lines that they were just like shoving into this movie. So just we're, so really then, so then we're led to believe that this reporter that was interviewing Donald Logue's character somehow got to Texas <laughs> And his and her face is melting. Well, whether or not she's like the same character because it's parallel universes, I don't. Yeah, it's just it's, it's so much nonsense, and there's t- so much more. I don't even want to go into the like the viral marketing. Like, it, 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 there's all these weird connections. Yeah, no, please don't. I, yeah. uh, 
Ain't nobody got time for that. <laughs> yeah, listen, it's late. I gotta go to bed, so please don't. Okay. <laughs> to wrap up, also in 2018 is the movie Overlord. And reports assumed that this was going to be, it, because it was being produced by J.J. Abrams, that it was going to be the next Cloverfield film. And it released that later that same year, November 3rd, 2018. Um, it's a World War II horror movie with uh, kind of zombies. And when it came out, it was decidedly not a Cloverfield movie. It was a good movie. <laughs> yeah. Abrams denied that this was ever the case, um, but this was after the whole paradox debacle. And mm-hmm. Parad- so, debacle. <laughs> <laughs> so the question is, was it ever originally, right? Yeah. They actually put some stuff in there that was meant to be tied to it. Um I can't find any of any information if they did any some reshoots or something to like do any of that or they took some stuff out or whatever. So that movie's not Cloverfield related, but it is a very cool movie. Yes. You should all watch it. Okay. So instead of a general was it worth it, do you think it was worth it to add Cloverfield to these movies? <sighs> I mean, I'm going to say no, because I think that it made the movies worse. And I, I like, honestly, it's kind of insulting for the people who wrote that. OK, so I'm speaking specifically about 10 Cloverfield Lane, The Cellar. I'm going to from here on from here on out. I'm calling it The Cellar because that's the movie that it is um, like the people who wrote The Cellar and were like, oh, this is just going to be like a really good, like solid um kind of thriller, psychological thriller movie. And to their credit got pretty big actors to be in this movie, right? It's kind of insulting to them to be like, this movie's not going to sell unless it's called Cloverfield. It's like, fuck you. Like, you yeah, don't know that. Like, have a little yeah. faith in the movie. I and I, yeah. I feel like that movie would have done fine. Like, it would, like maybe it wouldn't have made, you know, a, over $100 million or whatever. Had a good word of mouth on yeah, it. Yeah, but it would have made money and it would have been like a good movie and – it didn't it just didn't need the cloverfield nonsense and it wouldn't ha- have had that taint of oh well this is a good movie until the last 10 minutes or whatever the <laughs> right. hell you know and then cloverfield paradox like just in general just doesn't sound like it was fucking worth it at all i think i agree with you um because when i think of 10 cloverfield lane if you'd remove the abrams influence where he's like oh hey let's let's just tack on this little bit of cloverfield at the end of it i feel like that movie could have been like an oscar contender with the performances that were given by John Goodman, hundred so, percent, yeah, so it's, re- good. it's really good. Yeah, it's and then, really good. And Other then, than the last ten minutes, that it just it it kind cheap, of a little it com- messy. It completely cheapens it. Yeah, it, it throws it's it into a very like just tight a, movie. It just throws it into like just a popcorn movie. Yeah, like you know? schlock territory. Exactly. When this could have been a really good sleeper indie film mm-hmm. uh, that I think would have been would have gotten a lot. F- uh, it would have gotten a lot farther, I think, than what they would have than what they were originally giving it credit for. And they're like, ooh, let's just then, yeah, tack this Cloverfield bit on at the end. And then with the, I feel the same way about the Cloverfield paradox because it sounds like they did a lot of changes to it to really kind of like shoehorn. just to force feed Cloverfield into it. Yeah, exactly, to shoehorn. If they had gotten rid of like all of those pieces and then really kind of just fine-tuned what the movie really wanted to be, I think it could have been a really good sci-fi thriller horror film. Yeah. Get rid of the weird arm. Get rid of the 3D printer. Just <laughs> really just call it the guard particle. Because like the whole part about like this woman being trapped in the wall and then they're getting her out and she's like, oh yeah, this is my team. And like I, it, that stuff was really kind of cool. Like, yeah. Like the parallel universes merged. Well, yeah, and so exactly. she got like stuck in a weird fucking place. That in was their cool. Universe. Yeah. Get rid of all the Cloverfield shit. And that could, that could have been a good movie. So I, yeah, I don't think it was worth it to tack on Cloverfield onto these things. And like we talked about earlier, you and I agreed on, if they just had come up front and just been like, we're going to create a Cloverfield Twilight Zone-esque type of franchise yeah, yeah. where there's going to be some connections, but it's just like, it, it, it's going to be more, more fun instead of like, let's really try and get these things connected. Yeah. I, I completely agree. If they came out forward at the beginning, being like, we're just going to make a bunch of really fun, different movies that are part of the Cloverfield universe, people have been much more accepting. We wouldn't be even having this conversation about, yeah, that was that was an okay Cloverfield movie, whatever. We'll move on. Um, uh, I mean, wait like wait what... to the next one. But it just, uh, 
I agree. It just it didn't. They didn't. The tacking on was just if you were gonna do it. Start from the beginning. Yeah. Why it. both of those movies had to happen in the middle of it? Like, what the fuck? Yeah, it it, it would have given a lot more a lot more creative people a chance to get their shit made, uh, and it would have given more people chances to join Team Cloverfield. Yeah, and, yeah. and made it and been like, okay, if I knew this was going in, I we could have made it better instead of the poor guy that did God. Um, God particle was just like I have to add all this shit. Kind of yeah. Wait after this is Cloverfield now. Yeah, what? it's like now I gotta I totally adjust my movie. I mean, from the sounds of it, it was kind of crap before, but <laughs> um, it yeah it it didn't. I don't think it needed to go that way. I do like the idea of a, uni- a film universe that is just kind of anthology type. Right. Um, I mean, they did it with the just three flavors they, Cornetto. Like it's their kind of spiritual sequels where they're yeah. They're yeah. like in the same kind of comedic vein, exactly. You know, and they're yeah, different. That's, that's they're different genres. Yeah. That's like, a good example. Like so, it can it can work. Same, yeah, There's the literally creative, an example of it. Yeah, the same creative team doing stuff that you already know and like, but just uh, well, you know, we had a zombie movie, then we yeah. had a, a cop movie, and then we had an alien movie. Yeah, you know? yeah. It, the Black Mirror idea. Yeah, exactly. And just made made it a movie series, and um, if if they came out with that originally and just stuck with it but just this tacking on thing was just clearly didn't work and whether or not we'll ever see another cloverfield movie again uh b- because how bad it just <laughs> how bad it got yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah like it would clearly was not worth the effort on that third run yeah, yeah. so to sum it all up boom boom boom, boom. <laughs> <laughs>